62 year old female here for pain in the left shoulder going on for about four years. She had an MRI which shows a near complete tear of the subscap tendon. We're going to go ahead and just look at that on ultrasound. She can flex to about 130, AB up to about 90. And, uh, she didn't respond well to therapy in the past. She only had about a six week course, however. So I just am curious really to see what this looks like on ultrasound. The MRI was done about five months ago. So we'll see if there has been progression. Also showed a high grade articular sided supraspinatus tear. Let's see one thing now. Can you push me away? She should really have a hard time doing that. Push me away. Push. Pussy. Pussy. She can get me out there. Bring it up this way. Negative lift though. Keep your hand away from your back. Yeah. Maybe she's got some sub subscap tendon in there. Okay. Oops. So we can see the biceps tendon here in the groove. Right side of the screen is medial. Here's a pretty clear view of the biceps tendon just sitting in that sulcus. And here we are at 1359. You can see her pec major tendon. And then we're just going up. And here's the pec major tendon going across. You can see the overlying deltoid muscle. Here's the biceps now along the axis, 1400. Biceps tendon looks normal here in along axis. Biceps tendon. It looks pretty much okay. Here's the subscap and long axis. You really um, don't see much of a tendon. And here you can see essentially the deltoid muscle going right down to the bone essentially. Um, there's this void where you would expect the subscapularis tendon. Um, you can see the lesser tuberosity with essentially just nothing attached to it. Right side of the screen is medial. So this is a pretty rare full thickness, just about complete tear of the subscap tendon. However, she did have a negative liftoff and a negative liftoff lag sign, which is not consistent with her ultrasound. Go look at it now in short access. Um, left side of the screen is inferior, and again, we're just not seeing much of a tendon. And again, you can see this subscapularis void, just like any complete tear of a rotated cuff where essentially you just don't see a tendon and you see the overlying muscle dropping down to the bone. Well, here's our superior facet of the greater tuberosity. And here you can see the biceps tendon, which marks the very anterior distal aspect of the supraspinatus tendon. And also you can appreciate a convex superior facet of the greater tuberosity. And this facet marks where the anterior aspect of the supraspinatus tendon inserts. Very anterior aspect. Might be seeing a little glimpse of the biceps tendon here. And here is this distal anterior full thickness tear of the supraspinatus tendon, which essentially is this black zone with pretty well delineated margins, and it does not go away when you try to toggle the probe, confirming that it is a full thickness tear. And also appreciate just proximal to this full thickness tear, you can see a little oblique thin line consistent with a partial articular sided tear as well. This patient had an MRI which showed a high-grade articular supraspinatus tear throughout most of the supraspinatus tendon, but as you go somewhat posterior, the supraspinatus tendon looks fairly well preserved as it does here. Superior facet greater tuberosity going posterior. And again, here's that distal anterior supraspinatus tear. And here's that tear again. You can see how sharp the margins are. Seeing some of that tendon. And again, here you can appreciate also some cell deltoid bursitis as well. And the actual thickness of the anterior part of the supraspinatus tendon is somewhat thin. I was starting posterior at 1404 and just trying to go anterior. And posteriorly, the supraspinatus again looks fairly well preserved. I'm just going to look at it now in short excess. Let me go posterior. So again, posterior, the thickness of the tendon is not too bad. It does have a moderate subdeltoid bursitis. And as you go anterior, you can appreciate this oblique linear tear in the anterior aspect of the supraspinatus tendon with also some thinning of the actual bulk of the tendon itself. We're at 
1407 now. Looking at the infraspinatus tendon, which I believe looks okay. Right side of the screen is medial. And again, here's a fairly normal looking infraspinatus tendon inserting on the middle facet of the greater tuberosity. Infraspinatus tendon and teres minor. And here is a short axis view of the infraspinatus and teres minor. You can see the muscle with the tendon kind of within the muscle at this point. And also you can appreciate the overlying deltoid muscle. And here again, there's just some coloration to try to clarify which is tendon and which is muscle. Just kind of converging. And then as you go distal, you can see the muscle forming tendon. And generally the infraspinatus is about twice as big as the teres minor. Alright, we're going to go ahead and just for a pain relief do a subcranial injection. <laughs> so here's our needle. We're trying to approach the subdeltoid bursa, which is about a couple of millimeters away from where the needle is now. And now we're approaching the subdeltoid bursa and we're essentially in it. Maybe our first flash of injection was somewhat superficial to that. So we're trying to feed the needle and kind of thread it through that subdeltoid bursa. Can go a little bit proximal here. Here we're trying to actually advance the needle somewhat proximally. Some resistance, there may be some inflammatory tissue within that bursa making the injection difficult, but as you can see here, the injection spread pretty nicely over the supraspinatus tendon, and she actually did pretty well from that procedure.